Friends, as a sequel to our feature about the consecrated life, we will discuss today the three evangelical councils. Last time, we identified the three evangelical councils of chastity, poverty, and obedience. The Catechism teaches that profession of these constitute the consecrated life. Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution of Vatican II on the Church, the 50th anniversary of which we celebrate on this year of consecrated life, teaches us the evangelical councils of chastity dedicated to God, poverty, and obedience are based upon the words and examples of the Lord. Considering the life of Christ in the Gospels, we would see that these three councils are, according to St. John Paul II, characteristic features of Jesus, of His life, and of the life He desired for His disciples. We recall the counsel he gave to the rich young man. If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Our brothers and sisters in the consecrated life make these counsels, the life of Christ, visible in the world by professing and practicing them. They direct us prophetically through their life to the kingdom of God. Now, what is chastity? Chastity is the virtue of being pure, not only in body, but in mind and heart. Our consecrated brothers and sisters live the virtue of purity in a chaste and celibate life out of love. St. John Paul II wrote in the post-synodal apostolic exhortation, Vita Consecrata, that it is a manifestation of dedication to God with an undivided heart. It is a reflection of the infinite love which links the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and evokes a total love for God and brothers. While chastity acknowledges that God alone can fully satisfy the longings of the heart, poverty proclaims that God is a person's only real treasure. Consecrated people vow to live a simple life without attachment to material possessions. They depend on the providence of God and become one with those who have less. For them, being poor in material goods and in spirit is an expression of the total gift of self that Jesus showed. Though he was rich, he became poor. Lastly, obedience. The document Vita Consecrata says that it shows the liberating beauty of a dependence which is not servile but filial marked by a deep sense of responsibility and animated by mutual trust, which reflects the harmony among the persons of the Trinity. Obedience is about listening, discerning together, and respecting the authority of those who, by the grace of God, were entrusted with it. Jesus is the model par excellence of obedience. His food was to do the will of the Father. So there you go, brothers and sisters. Pope Francis invites us to be increasingly aware of the gift which is the presence of our many consecrated men and women, heirs of the great saints who have written the history of Christianity. Let us pray for our consecrated brothers and sisters as they pray for all of us constantly.